Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Caleb with Salty. I don't know if you've seen a few of my videos or shorts, but I did upload a sea trial on this thing. I ended up getting a Panga Edredonio. This boat was made in Medellin, Colombia. It's one of the two um, famous Panga brands. It's We got a Mesa in Mexico, and then this one is um, the Edredonio brand. So I just wanted to take you a little walk through. I'm gonna go to the sandbar today. It's a little rough offshore um, for going out on this boat. And most boats, I mean, get thrown around. So we're just gonna have a chill day on the sandbar and we're gonna go out, but I wanted to do a little walk through of the boat and what I've done to it. So I'm gonna pop this cover off real quick. Right here guys, here's the boat. Here it is. Um, it's about 16 foot. Let me open this. This thing is way too overflown. But yeah, this is the boat. Here it is. I mean, it's been a solid boat. I took it out in four to six foot swells. It's a little too much. I mean, for a one man like just me, it's doable. I would say three to four is it handles fine two people already been out in the keys with it but the reason I went with this boat is it's super economical it's a it's a good solo boat that's cheap you know to get out that I could fish inshore offshore go to the sandbar um, and it's cheap on gas I got a six gallon external that I have if I do trolling I'm gonna run a 13 gallon external um, what I love about this boat is uh, come with me Liz I have Liz behind recording. So what I love with this boat is I did buy the uh, the motor separate. It's a Suzuki 2016. It's got about 60 hours on it. But I wanted to go with a tiller setup because I have had uh, boats before with remote steering, you know, running fluids, and I wanted the least amount of crap with the boat. I wanted a tiller that. The only issue I'm gonna have with a tiller is, you know, something that's wrong with the motor, pretty much. I don't have to worry about uh, fluid lines leaking. Um, I don't have to have no steering. And for me to run that system, especially a Sea Star system, it's gonna run $1,500. And these Pangas, you know, were originally designed how they originally had these boats in other countries. They were all ran tiller, even with like 70, 90, 90. Uh, horsepower outboards I'm sure you guys know that but it's a super simple layout uh, come with me Liz so I have here the center console I mount the, the Garmin right here it goes right here um, there used to be a hole right here for the steering I ended up my and mounted the switch here um, I have the battery stored under here I have one battery here that runs the Garmin and then I have another battery I keep in the back that runs the Suzuki. Uh, but yeah, it's super simple, super, super simple setup. The boat runs about 30 miles an hour top speed with just me on it. Um, this motor has been super good to me. Um, I do love the motor. I got rod holders here, here, um, one here. I do want to mount maybe a few more for drift fishing. I have two in the back. I mounted these in the center console. For all these floors right here, this floor, the all the floors in here, they come out. So this boat is a super, you know, commercial ready boat. Um, this boat was used for commercial fishing uh, when it was back in Puerto Rico. So it has, you can see it does have some lines here. These lines were when it was, uh, these lines were from the deep drop. They used to run deep drop rigs in Puerto Rico. So, yeah, I mean, the boat's solid. I did put, uh, I did put this on here. So, the reason I installed this is it helps the boat plane, you know, super easy. Um, and it's helped improve gas mileage and everything. But, yeah, as far as this outboard, I mean, the outboard's a beaut. It's been... A good motor for me you can now hook up a system to it and it will tell you 
everything about the motor, the hours, what issues it's having. Um, it's got power tilt and trim, pull start, all the extra, you know, goodies you're going to need. All right, hey guys, I just wanted to talk about a few of the negatives as far as this boat. Every boat has a negative and the positive. So we'll first start with the positives. Um, you don't need a bigger mo uh, motor on this boat. If I was to have a 16 foot boat of this size of any other brand that's not a Panga, you're most likely going to need minimum 50, 60 horsepower, depending if it was a Carolina skiff or if you're actually running like a V hole skiff. But for this having, you know, a little a, a good V to it and what it has, I mean, this thing could play with a 25, and I do have a 30 on it. Um, even lighter, probably 20 horse, two stroke, probably run like 20 miles an hour with them. So that's a big reason why I chose this boat. You know, not having to have as much horsepower it means you can afford a newer motor and a better motor because you're not going to have to get as much horsepower, and that's going to make your budget go way up. Um, another thing I love about these boats is you can take them offshore so they're they're seaworthy enough to go offshore and as well they're the um the draft of the boat excuse me is so shallow that you can still you know fish the flats and real shallow water on these boats so that's a good thing what i love about them even you know the 28 footers and the bigger boats they're still able to fish the shallows because they draw such a s small amount of water so let's go to the downsides the downsides is these boats are narrow and they can't really build them out too much wider because the narrow factor allows the boat to have such a light motor and widening them really kills what the penguins are made for. Um, so this boat, like I could fish two people comfortably on this boat easily. If it's a very, very rough day, like five foot seas. So just me, it's fine. But any normal day max two to three they're fine because you can't have two people in the back that's the thing with this boat is you have to kind of still display the weight because it's a smaller boat um i'm 280 so i'm a bigger guy if i was normal <laughs> like this you could walk around fine but the boat does lean a bit so you it, with me in it so you do have to keep in mind you know walking around displaying the weight how you're going to move around in the boat and things of that nature but yeah, that's uh, pretty much the summary of this new boat I got. And uh, I think everybody should afford, can afford a Panga and they're a good boat to get in. I mean, I'm not going to lie with numbers and what I did get this for. But I'm all in around 7500 trailer boat and motor. I got a deal. Um, the guy I got this from, I got the boat and the trailer for around, I think it was... 3650 both are registered both have titles and then he had a Yamaha that was brand new and I wanted to put my own motor on it I didn't want to go with that motor and I got this Suzuki that's 30 horse 2016 it's got like 55 60 hours now since I've been using it and this motor cost me I think it was around three grand maybe 32 the most but you do the math I mean it's been a solid boat and I'm pretty happy to be on the water with a solid boat um, for this price point. But uh, yeah guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go on the sandbar.